with Emacs, so I'm, I'm going to show it here. Uh, this is what Emacs looks like. As you can see, it has a manual and a tutorial. Uh, it's very user friendly. So it, al it also has Tetris. It has really quite a lot of things. Uh, that's quite good. Does it have psychoanalyzed pinhead? Uh, I'm not even sure offhand. I'd have to go looking. Um, but in addition to having Tetris, it's also a text editor. Um, so that, that's what I'm going to talk about mostly, I guess. Uh, so let's, let's get out of here for a second. All right. Um, so why would you care about Emacs? Uh, one reason that I'll start with is that you probably don't only care about text, you probably also care about talking to the computer with a command line of some kind. This is Bash that I'm doing here. Oh gosh, quite a lot of bash going on. Um, and you notice I, I ran that got thing, which is not a real command. It, it's just an alias, right? So you can customize it, and customization is kind of a big deal um, all over the place, right? And you know, if you're familiar with a shell, really just about any shell, you know a lot of keyboard shortcuts, right? So things like you know, control P to go back to the last command, and control A to go to the beginning of a line, and so on. Um, control R to go search back uh, for other things. So I can bring back that command very quickly and you know, run something very nice, right? So you probably know at least like a dozen of these commands already, and I'm mentioning this because one, they're useful, and two, they're the same commands that you'll have in Emacs. So even if you've never used Emacs before, you probably already know kind of a lot about Emacs, and, and it'll fit in there nicely. Um, so that's, that's pretty neat. Um, so let's go look at Emacs again. Um, you can do kind of a lot in Emacs. So here I've got an email. I'm just going to send my email. Um, oh, it looks like I'm going to have to... Oh, yep, my email sent. Uh, so I sent an email. That's, that's kind of neat. You don't have to do everything inside Emacs yes. um, if you don't want to, but you can get quite a lot going on in this, in this one environment. It works! It worked! My phone buzzed! I wasn't exactly <laughs> sure why, I was trying to figure something else out. Ah, uh, yes. Um, so that's cool. Uh, so let's, let's look at another thing. Got Emacs. Alright, so right now you can see I'm running Emacs in a daemon mode. Right, so it's like client-server Emacs. Uh, and I enjoy doing this um, because I get some of the benefits that you'd get from Tmux or Screen. Right, so if I lose a wireless connection or whatever, uh, network connection, uh, I won't lose my work and things like that. Um, so that's one neat feature. Um, and let's get into here. Yes. So I'm going to start up the client. And so the, the other Emacs that I was running had already been started. Right? Then I'm going to start the Emacs client just right here, boom, and it started. Right? And, and so I think that in comparison to something else like Vim, where the people say, oh, Vim is so fast, uh, you can get pretty good performance out of Emacs as well, so I wanted to make that point. All right. Um, so now I'm in Emacs, and I could also be inside a shell inside Emacs. Um, so this is also pretty cool, and it behaves very much like uh, the, the normal Bash shell. You know, it's running Bash in this case. Um, so I can do all the same things here. Uh, but you also get <coughs> some neat benefits, because you know, in Tmux you'd have to change modes to go up and explore and, and do things like that in your scroll back, right? But that's all, you know, working the same way here. Emacs makes everything just text inside, right? Um, so, for example, if I do Control R, I can go search for Emacs, you know, backward in the buffer all over the place. Um, but if I do Meta R, I have the same. Oops, sorry. Meta R. Oh, sorry. So if I do meta R properly, uh, then I have the same kind of search back through my command history. Right? So, so it's really quite a lot of things all integrated here. Uh, so I think that's neat. Let's go look at another thing, which is hello. All right, so Emacs is very customizable. And the way that it kind of achieves this is by essentially being a Lisp interpreter, right? So here's the only Lisp I'm going to show. Uh, and it's just a, a cute little customization. So I'm going to just run that, and now my Twitter handle is down here in, in the mode line. We won't miss the mode line much for this talk. Um, 
So this is pretty neat. And you can code all kinds of crazy Lisp and extend things. And so all the neat features that I use come from this extensibility. Uh, so that's kind of cool. All right. So that was all introduction. Now shall we start to use Emacs? I thought it would be fun to do a, you know, something relevant to DC Python. So here is, uh, I don't know if this is active anymore, but yes. this is your DC Python Django thing. So I, I was looking for something that I could edit in here. And a hobby of mine is editing readme files. Um, so if you go down to the bottom, you can see there's, there's sort of some issue where for some reason it has all these things kind of munged and messed up together. Um, OK, so we can fix that. So I made a fork earlier. Here it is. I'll, I'll get my little guy there. And let's go back to the shell. And I will get clone. That guy, and I'll clone it into here. All right, so I'm running my shell command, and I hope my... OK, good. That was over my phone, so I was worried. <laughs> um, so now we've got that, and we can go in and start to work with it. So let's go into the Django, oops, uh, all right, Django, and I wanted to read me. Yes, OK. So here it is, and it's in a restructured text mode. If I go down a little bit, I can see even before I get to the bottom, we have problems. And I, Emacs is set up to show me the problems with white space, which I care about maybe unduly. Uh, but there's, there's trailing white space, and there's these tabs. Uh, there are tabs instead of spaces. Oh my gosh, how can we live? So, so let's take care <laughs> of that. <Yeah. laughs> so I'm going to get everything and then um, run a command. So I'm going to do untabify first. So untabify, and I'll pop mark a little bit to go back to where I was. And so we have taken care of the, the tabs. And now if I do... Um, Delete trailing white space. Yeah, dash. Oh, in fact, I well, you could type the dash if you okay. wanted to, but I've got uh, some add-ons that okay. make it okay. easy for me to be lazy and not type dashes. So that's that's nice. All right, uh, I should have made a branch earlier, so let's let's do that quick. So I'm using Magit, which yeah. is a Excellent. Git integration thing. So let's get that up here. Um, I'll say uh, sure. Go ahead and save it. And I want to make a branch, and I'll create a branch, and I'll call the branch readme cleanup. Now I have a branch, and I'm on it. So uh, I got some changes already. So let me, uh, oops. Yeah, I'll save this and say yes, do that. OK, so now I have this, and this is just white space. And we've got our first commit. OK, great. So what really, what we were interested in doing was down at the bottom here, right? Um, so we have uh, some things going on, right? And one of them is that these are single backticks. And this is a thing from markdown rather than restructured text, right? So let's fix that. So let's go here and then go down to the bottom. And I will do a search and replace, where I am saying take single backtick and replace with double. And I could be very careful and do all of this, or I could just say do all of them. And I've got all of them now. OK. Uh, so that was, that was cool. But there's a problem here, right? This one probably should be as well. So let's select that and give it some backticks. Oh, we want one more backtick. Boom. OK. So let's make another commit. Backticks. OK, two commits in. Um, and I'm realizing now that I forgot to switch to graphical mode, which I wanted to do, right? It's nice that you can live all the time in text mode, right? Which is useful if you have to SSH somewhere or something like this. Um, but it's not the only way to live. So let's uh, go back to the shell, and we'll just switch that quick. So I'm in here, and I'm going to start a graphical guy. There it is. And let me just make it a little nicer for full screen. And I'll zoom in some. And full screen. OK. And I'm still, uh, let me do this instead. 
So I'm still hearing the same thing because I am connected to the same Emacs server. All right, so what else do I want to do? Uh, oh, these numbers are a problem. Yes, problematic numbers. Uh, so it is not a lot of work to fix these numbers, right? Uh, and this would work fine, I think, in Markdown, but again, we need to get it to restructure text. So I could just change them, but I'm going to show a couple more features because it's fun. So let's make a macro. So here we go making a macro. Control X uh, there. And I will forward search for the number one, go to the beginning of the line, set mark. Now I'll do a regex search, which is a fun thing to do. So uh, do, do, do search. And just a trivial regex to search for an empty line. Right, so now we're at the end there. Uh, go back here, that's where I want to be. And now I will use a rectangle command. There are all these rectangle commands that are great. So control X, R, and capital N inserts numbers. Sweet, right? Okay, so um, let's finish here. And I'll finish my macro. It's deliberately not doing the full change. I'll do one, one other thing. But now I have a macro and I can just do that again and do it again. And now I've got my numbering the way I want it. Okay, great. Uh, but we didn't finish the job just yet, did we? So it doesn't even matter. You just literally blew Chris's mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Here, here's another fun thing. Um, so this is a neat package where I can have multiple cursors. Okay, so I have multiple cursors now, and I can move them around. And do what the hell is that? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. All right, Sublime yeah, has this as well, but now it's Emacs because you can just add whatever you want. Okay, so this is looking pretty good at this point, right? We've got our numbers. Um, so let's save and commit. Say numbers. And we've got three commits now. Let's push. Running push. Please tell me I still have an internet connection. I should have had a clever backup plan in case the internet connection did not. Oh, it worked. Good. Okay, let's go back over here. Show me that I have, a, there we go. Okay, so let's do a pull request. Wait, pull request. All right, so now there's a pull request. Um, so that's kind of showing workflow-y kinds of things. And I, I like that you can sort of easily hop through this sort of stuff. Um, we haven't done any Python yet. Shall we do Python? <laughs> All right, so let's go to a toy project that I have. So in here, I have some actual Python. What I use for Python in Emacs is the LPy package mostly with flycheck and a couple other things. Uh, so it works pretty nice. I've just I got things actually a lot more set up and in motiv like motivated to do this talk. Um, so let me see. What do we want to show in here? Uh, oh, so one thing you can see there's underlining <laughs> maybe. So let's go and, and move to the first underlining spot. So this is flycheck giving me the the pep eight what for, saying you know you, you don't have the spaces that you need for pep eight, so uh, there there it's much better now. Another thing is we've got git gutter happening over there, uh, which is also was in Sublime, but now it's here. Okay, so we've got this checking, and it does all kinds of nice checking. Like if we say import OS, uh, and then we don't use it, it will say you know you imported this but you didn't use it, and if I have bad syntax. Um, it'll say, hey, you have a syntax error. This is not a complete thing yet. Um, so that's, that's all pretty cool. Uh, oh, I also wanted to show a feature that I hope will work. So if I set point here and then do control C E, it says I'm editing three usages of at in the buffer. There are more down below, but it's used some semantic stuff coming from um, a library actually called Jedi. Uh, to determine that these are the ats that, uh, that mean the same thing in Python sense, right? So I can edit kind of like the multiple cursors, but with that syntactic analysis. So it's, it's really quite fun. Oops. Oh, anyway. Uh, so you, you can have fun all day with things like this. All right. Uh, so that's a couple features there. Oh, it's also very easy to run tests. So I can run some tests. Oh, don't save that. <laughs> okay. So my tests run. They're slow for a reason. Um, so that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, let's go back to here. All right. What other features should we show? 
Do, 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 do. Oh, of course we can get our REPL going. So here's our REPL. If anybody can tell me how to make it not do the four of them at the beginning when I started, I would like to know. Uh, Sounds like an it file stuff. Yeah, I, I haven't actually even started to dig into it, so I'm just being lazy. But if someone else wants to do it for me, uh, that would be fine. Okay, what do I want to show in here? Oh, uh, of course we have snippets. So I can import things that I use a lot, and uh, so snippets are fun. Uh, you also get things like tab completion, right, in the normal Emacs way, where it'll say all that good stuff. Uh, okay. What else? <laughs> Go back over here. Do you get tab completion from modules in a virtual environment or from only system? Uh, I'm not going to show the virtual environment setup, but it does have it. Um, so I imagine it would, but I don't know offhand. Uh, let's see. All right. Uh, I just wanted to show quickly in here that you can integrate back and forth. So if I have this, I can just run that. And it was weird to me that it didn't echo the command that I'm running, right, the lines from my file, um, but it works pretty nicely this way. Uh, so we've got all this nice integration with REPL is the end of that story. Okay, let's go work on something a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go navigate using DIRED, and I have a copy of the scikit-learn source in here. So let's go into scikit, oops, oh. Uh, SK learn there. All right, and I want the naive Bayes. So here's the tests for naive Bayes in Scikit, and it has pretty many lines. If you want, you can put on line numbers and you can navigate. I happen to know I want to go to line 332, and let's just go forward here. Okay, so here's this multinomial naive Bayes uh, function. We might want to know how is that or class or whatever it is. Uh, so we might want to know where is this defined. So we can hop to that using meta dot and, and trace it around for a little bit. So, okay, it inherits from this guy, and that inherits from this guy, and that inherits from like, all kinds of weird stuff. We go over here. Uh, okay, so that's the end of the line, I guess, and you want to look at what object is. Um, so this is kind of cool that you can hop around like this, and, and it's got some neat features like that. So let's uh, go back. Pop, 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 nice. and pop. Uh, and there we are back you know, where we were. So this, this is kind of cool for quickly navigating around to where you want to go. Now, uh, I showed earlier the Tetris, and I want to show another fun thing. So, very important. Nyan mode, I don't know if you can see, <laughs> down there is uh, the, the Nyan cat anymore? to uh, show how far through the buffer you are. And another very useful feature is, uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, the Nyan Cat is animated. <laughs> so uh, the point there is just that Emacs is fun, and there's a lot that you can do with it. Um, there is a little bit of a learning curve, but I think it's kind of a, a worthwhile learning curve, and it can be enjoyable. It can be like a like a an RPG where you pick up new skills and abilities as you go along. <laughs> uh, so it's, it's really quite quite neat. And let me do just one more thing. I promised in that email that I sent earlier oops, that I would send out a tweet. Uh, so let me go to my kill ring. All right, the kill ring is another neat thing, right? So you can have all this stuff and uh, leave. We should now have. Come on now. Yes. All right. So if you want to, to see everything I showed, there is a, a complete write up over here. And uh, thank you very much. Questions. Is your dot emacs file? or files available to, I mean, I've read about some of the multi-cursor stuff and it looks really cool, I just have been too afraid to try. Oh, um, yeah, I've got all my stuff up and a list of resources down at the bottom cool. of this write-up. Uh, and I, I totally redid my Emacs D for this talk and it's way better now using a bunch of cool things like Cask 
for Emacs Lisp package management. And uh, I've quit having a .emacs file and only have the init.l, which I think is a good idea. And actually now all my config, and I only have a bash and a git config happening, but they're actually inside my emacsd, which is a nice way to keep all your config together uh, that I like. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, it is all available. Yep. So is this your favorite Python editor, or, or does it sort of depend on what you're trying to do? I would say you, yes, you, it you, is It is my favorite one. I don't have extensive, like I haven't developed a strong relationship with PyCharm or anything like that. Oh. Um, but I also spend a considerable amount of time at a, at a text console. Uh, so it makes sense to, to use Emacs for me. Um, but you know, people do impressive things with all kinds of editors, so it's, I'm not trying to be Emacs elitist or anything, but it is the best and you should use it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you. I've heard your pull request for you. Hey, cool. Was <laughs> that for Ryan? Did you have your readme well formatted? Yeah. Yeah. I, I made sure to look at it. <laughs> Do we have Ryan? Yes. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I forgot. Never mind. I'm already. We, we do. We have okay. a oh, yeah. uh, mini display for it. Yep. All right. So while we're taking a break and while there are people setting up or one person setting up, um, who has announcements? Anybody? Jobs. Things that they're interested in. Yeah. Hello. I don't go to as many of these meetings as I'd like, but I'm here tonight. I'm Dan Ryan. I work for Paramedic Technology. Um, I found out a few days ago that the job I've had for the last 16 years is going to India. And my Whoa. wife is not thrilled about moving to India, so <laughs> I'm looking for a new job. So uh, I have often said I'd love to do more Python work. I do about 20% of Python work in my current job. Um, I've got a few more weeks in my current job, and then I'll be on the market. So I'm in the market for a, a job where I can do more Python development. That's my announcement. Uh, talk to me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you sit back down. I work for a couple different companies. Uh, one we're looking for right now has a really cool opportunity doing a massive image, video, uh, audio archive for NASA. It's one of the big parts coming up right now. Um, Go, Python, Angular, JS, Amazon Cloud. So I'm Ari Sani. I work for NGO. I sent out a job posting to the Python uh, job list and got some really awesome uh, responses and got some difficult. But uh, we're looking for Python developers, maybe some Java, um, and by and large, we're looking for people who, for lack of a better word, are agile and can do a lot of great things. We've got an office in Boston, um, and uh, it's a small company, less than 50 people, and just a really great atmosphere. I, I started there six months ago, and I love it. Because um, I've never shown for a company while standing, like I don't know. <laughs> so, so for whatever that's worth, uh, it's a great place. Um, and uh, yeah, we do a lot of neat things, some private, some some federal contracting and stuff. But uh, we've got a drink fridge, oh. powered by Raspberry Pi, uh, this kind of stuff. Uh, we do have a nice uh, Phantom DJI drone, which we took up in Frederick, Maryland, to fly around some parts and got some cool footage. Uh, and it's a you know company October has. We don't have a drone, but we've got beer and sing along. <laughs> <laughs> you can always ask sing along. <laughs> Ryan, do you have all of your stuff ready to go? Do you need a Wi-Fi connection? You need a cable? Okay. Switch you two for cool. the All right. We're going to go with Ryan next instead, so we're going to take a couple more minutes. So anybody have any more announcements? I wasn't paying attention to the other one. <laughs>